Yannick Sinner just won his first Grand Slam at the 2024 Australian Open, and although that is a big story and he is a future star, or I guess a present star, to me, as the Foot Doctor Zach channel, the bigger story is what shoes he was wearing and just how unique they are on the tour. Now, while most of the Nike sponsored athletes at the Australian Open are wearing some variation of the Nike Vapor Pro 2, Nike Vapor 11, GP Challenge 1, or maybe a paint job of the Nike Vapor Pro or GP Turbo, Yannick Sinner is playing in the Nike Zoom Zero back from 2018. But the real story though is, is what is inside the Zoom Zero, what is not inside newer Nike shoes, and why someone like Yannick Sinner, who is really an up and coming player with an up and coming game, would still choose this one over newer ones. Now, right off the bat in the Zoom Zero, I think a reason why, you know, Yannick Sinner likes these and a lot of other people really hold on to this shoe is because it's got a double booty liner. That means that the outside wrap is one piece, and then the inside wrap is one piece. So it's like a vacuum seal around your foot. Nike used to call it their second skin, you know, having that liner in there. And they actually made a version of the Nike Vapor 11, the Nike Vapor 11 knit with the same sock liner. What this to me does is when you suck down the laces because they are all outrigger laces, those laces traverse a much bigger surface area. So it's sucking down both of those layers. The upper is almost acts like vacuum seals around your foot, gives you a really intimate contact with the shoe. And for, you know, relatively how light the uppers are for how maximalist of a shoe this is, the lockdown on it, the heel slippage, really the containment, everything is really outsized for what is actually wrapping around your foot in the uppers. One thing you do sacrifice in the uppers of the Zoom Zero because of the multiple layering is breathability. If you look at the breathability test on these, they heat up 162 degrees, which is quite a bit. And even on the breathability mapping, it does take a little while for fog to start getting out of this shoe. It does eventually reach outside, but at least I remember I noticed in the Zoom Zeros, and I think a lot of other people probably noticed it too, they can hold on to some moisture. They can get damp for a while. But what I think the people that love the Zoom Zero, especially Yannick Sinner, know is that you might be sacrificing a little bit of breathability for all that really amazing containment. And as long as you bring a second pair of socks, I really don't think it matters. The other thing that anybody that really slides or drags can appreciate though is the drag guard here on the medial side not that there's just a presence of one and it's so thick is that it is cut here in all these different triangular patterns and that really does mimic how the shoe is going to be bending while you are sliding or dragging it also mimics how you're just going to be pushing off so it's very ergonomic to the foot and it'll break in a lot easier than some other really maximalist drag guards out there and right here at your first metatarsal head these triangular patterns really jut out a lot more than the rest of them giving you even more drag protection as you can see just a lot of really thoughtful touches in the upper is made specifically for the higher levels of tennis. Looking at the Zoom Zero's midsole, everybody has heard of the curved Zoom Air and how the Zoom Zero first shoe to make a curved Zoom Air unit. And although that is pretty cool, I think the cooler thing though is, is how the Zoom Air is oriented in the shoe with the two layers of foam and the Pebex shank goes from almost the back of the heel to almost in the forefoot. And the reason I like this is I actually talked about this in an earlier video on the Zoom Zero Jordan 8 collab shoe. And that's that this Zoom Air does not go full length. It does not go all the way to the tips of the toes. So it's not bending as much. It's gonna maintain its shape. And so because it's gonna maintain its shape versus something that's a full length Zoom Air, you're gonna get a little bit more push off power from it. The other thing is, is the shank that goes from pretty top loaded that dips down into the forefoot into a bottom loaded shank mimics Nike running shoes with their carbon fiber plates and their super shoe line. It's the same orientation. And so you're getting the Zoom Air that's doing that as well as the shank underneath of it giving you really just a, a unique sensation underneath of this shoe. And then on top of the zoom air unit in the forefoot, I couldn't find exactly what this foam was, but on the microscope, it looks like React foam, which isn't really even advertised in this shoe. I mean, there's a Phylon carrier on the outside. You can feel it, it's pretty stiff. But then in here, even on this older shoe, it still feels really plush, not only to your footbed, but just to touching it as well. I mean, if you look at the bounce height test on this shoe, it's still got 33 centimeters in the heel and then 34 in the forefoot. Even for an older shoe that has been broken in pretty good, shoe's still giving a lot back. And getting into the outsole tread, I think it's pretty cool that, that this tread design is multi-use because it's the same one as on the drag guard, whereas on the bottom of the shoe, it gets chunkier as it gets in the mid part of the shoe, then it flattens out again in the rear foot. It also has a very, very posterior rocker on it as well. 
So you know, these shoes are mostly for pretty gritty outdoor courts. They're also meant to slide in the front to back direction or north to south and to your posterior. In terms of side to side stability on the rubber on the midsole, it is not the be all end all for stability shoes like the Nike Vapor Pro 2, the Nike Vapor 11, even the Nike Vapor Pro to me are a little bit more stable shoes because of the flange, just because of, of what your foot is contacting when it touches the ground. However, in terms of very nimble movement on the court, very easy movement on the court, very easy speed, these really have you covered. I mean, even on a shoe that was from 2018, the speed ratio comes in at a 2.42, shank score of 0.4, brings it up to a 2.82, which is really where I think these shoes live. And I think on a newer production pair, one that Yannick Sinner has access to, you know, that speed ratio is probably up into the threes on these. So especially for front to back movement and just for hauling from one point of the court to another, the Zoom Zeros, like the GP Turbos, are a shoe that give so much back, it's hard to even feel any weight on them on the foot. And on the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I did this on the, the, the dead stock version of it. I mean, not even a millimeter of damage on this. So in terms of a shoe for durability in the midsole as well as in the outsole, I think it proof is in the pudding just with a shoe this old and how well it's still holding up. And the fit of the Zoom Zeros, I think is another big reason why people are still clamoring for this shoe to be re-released and why someone like Yannick Center is still wanting to wear it. Number one, I mean, the fit is pretty just true to size, right, in terms of length and width. However, it's more about what the Zoom Zero can do for your foot after it's been in it for hours and hours that I think is really the story of the Zoom Zeros and their fit. Number one, the curved Zoom Air unit, yeah, it's interesting to talk about, but it's it's function that I think really does the job. Because it is bottom loaded in the forefoot, plus that really plush foam over top of it, plus the, the pretty supportive shank underneath of it, even though it is a thin piece of plastic, this thing in the forefoot keeps the ball of your foot so resilient over hours and hours and hours because you've got a really soft material, then air tension, and then finally something that's a little bit more you know, supportive underneath of it with the shank. So someone that is playing in these for best of five set matches over the course of two weeks is really going to appreciate this kind of setup and just how forgiving it is to your foot, especially when you take them off and you're trying to recover for the next match. Now throwing an orthotic in these, I think even takes that up another notch. So somebody with ball of foot pain or someone that's just playing tennis and is up on the balls of their foot constantly can really appreciate a shoe like this, a shoe like the GP Turbo that just gives so much forgiveness in the forefoot and is just so well thought out for someone that is playing matches every other day over the course of two weeks against the best players in the world. But just as unique as the fit characteristics are, I think the playing characteristics of these are, are just as special. Because the Zoom Zero, I think, just occupies a space in the market that just really isn't being served right now. It doesn't matter if you are 10 feet behind the baseline and someone hits a drop shot a centimeter over the net, these shoes feel incredible hauling for those types of balls. If you are going diagonal from the, the furthest reaches of the court, the Zoom, well, I should say a new pair of Zoom Zeros, is one of the best shoes for covering that kind of ground. It's also a really great shoe for someone that relies a lot on their serve because it is so forgiving. And it does just give that extra little bit of pop when you are serving just because of the orientation of the shoe. So after serve and serve and serve, these shoes leave you feeling like you still got a little bit something to give even after maybe a few hours on court. In terms of their side to side stability, like I said, I don't really think they're anything special, right? I think some of the newer models out there have kind of gotten a little bit better in terms of that side to side stability and that side to side containment while not making the shoe super heavy. But in terms of court coverage, in terms of a shoe feeling like it's locking around your foot, a shoe feeling like it's an extension of your leg and a shoe that allows you to cover court so easily and a shoe that doesn't make your foot feel like it's on fire after a match, then I think really that the Zoom Zero still is one of the best shoes in the market for that. And that's probably why Yannick Sinner is having such a hard time moving on from these. Remember, he didn't move on to the GP Turbo either. You know, it's not just the newer shoes of Nike. And, you know, just me personally, I do wish that Nike Tennis would start bringing back innovation like this into the tennis space and just really going for something like they did with the Zoom Zero, with the GP Turbo, with the Vapor 10 Knit, with just really thinking about exactly what a tennis player is going to need, maybe in the later stages of the matches, and really thinking about how to augment the shoe to, to kind of fit that type of player. So, I mean, yeah, the shoe is from 2018, but I do think that we can learn a ton from this shoe, and I do think a lot of people 
are still probably trying to find these on eBay, on StockX, on GOAT. Um, I know I'll leave some links in the description below where then you can find them for a pretty decent price. I was seeing them all over the internet for around a hundred bucks, under a hundred dollars, kind of around there for new ones as well. I mean, I've had a couple models of these for a while just because I've been so interested in the, the Zoom Zero line, the GP Turbo line for such a long time. I've just found them to be some of Nike's best shoes really ever in their lineup. I really feel like Nike went through sort of a, a mini golden era there with the Nike Vapor 9, 9.5, 10, you know, Zoom Zero and GP Turbo. And I, and I really just, I, I hope that in the future we can get to that level of shoe again in the Nike tennis range because there is still just really no substitute for it out there. And I think building on these types of shoes is where we go to get the next great leap forward in tennis shoe technology. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Zoom Zero. Are you still hoarding pairs of them? Do you still have yours at your house? Or are you interested in going to find some in the resale markets? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you wanna see the younger sibling, or I guess I should say the younger descendant to the Zoom Zero, the Nike GP Challenge 1 going to the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.